Um, our first presentation is Anik uh, Jansen talking about positive pain. Yeah. Actually, the title is Positive uh, par uh, Parent Education. But okay. Um, so, thanks for being on. Oh. Well, parenting is one of the most exciting and challenging endeavors. You have a personal experience, but children don't come with an operating manual. So what happens when parents encounter unplanned obstacles? Uh, this presentation is about a novel approach for parents raising a child with a disability, and it has implication for all parents. I received my PhD in this university, so it was great to have I come back today. Uh, if parents suspect disability or discover that their child has additional needs, the future can become uncertain and deeply challenging. Positive psychology offers a strength-based approach. For instance, the, the concept of prospecting, which Martin Seligman uh, discovered, uh, is uh, about uh, looking into the future with hope. And um, to our knowledge, this had never been tried in the disability sector, so we were keen to, to give it a go. So today's presentation is about a small New Zealand uh, group, part of the Global Research Project, and I will describe the intervention that are embedded in the Parents Learning Program, uh, the results that have to do with empowerment, hope, and flourishing, and the emergence of a collective benefit mindset supporting a novel concept in positive psychology. At their first appointment in contact with the health system, parents are asked to, to, ask to talk about their child. Traditional medical approaches to disability focus on deficit, and what it's about what your child can't do. Uh, and this further increases parents' stress. Well, of course, it's important to get the history of a family. Um, the question is, is a discussion the best possible um, form? Um, <coughs> It can have the counter uh, effect of increasing parental, uh, parental stretch, sorry, st stress. Uh, and when parents say they don't dare to dream anymore, how do you encourage families to take steps towards an inspirational future? <clears throat> we ask this question knowing that conventional planning methods have not proven terribly effective. Our answer was to step out of the traditional frame of uh, the uh, a pathway, a conventional pathway using positive psychology methods and tools. We addressed uh, two audiences. Uh, practitioners are uh, with the, in the red, uh, orange um, uh, squares, and the parents and families are in the blue squares. So this is a, a, just a quick visual for you to see our overall model. If you want to more detail of it, we have obviously in publications. But the idea is that going up from engaging, training, and expanding, uh, we have, um, we're looking at what happens in the here and now with the families, as well as what happens in the longer term future. So we have done over 10 studies within these different, and they're representing in small numbers, so when you do give the presentation, you'll be able to see the numbers in the graph. Uh, and uh, some are published already, others are under review, but we're determined to get the word out there. And, and, uh, and basically, like Nigel and Nata say, says, uh, we have to really push and contradict some of the traditional models if we want to get the different results. Um, <coughs> so in the past three years, the, we've done ongoing measurements collected through online and, and in-session surveys. Uh, proje our projects were externally evaluated by the Melbourne-based Murdoch Children's Hospital Research Team. And uh, our exciting 2018 news is that we're starting a New, Zealand, a New Zealand cohort here, and we're going to benchmark it against our global results. So, um, so I forgot something. Um, the, this is a 20 hours uh, learning program, starting with prospection at the beginning, which is the vision setting, for which we in we. We gamified the concept of planning for parents into a tool, into a, into a, a fun activity to do. And uh, parents are telling us that it's extremely different than talking about it in conversation. Because when you talk about your child in conversation, you actually can't imagine the future. Whereas here we have little fun things to imagine the future with. 
And we include positive psychology interventions during which parents go through a mind shift. So they talk about their family goal, their children goal, and signature strength, and amongst others. I'll get back to this in a second. But at the end, the mind shift that the parents experience during this program is that they recognize their uh, expertise in, the, in uh, their knowledge of the child rather than giving away their control to professionals. And they recognize the importance of self-care and self-compassion as well in the process. So what positive uh, psychology interventions did we embed in these workshops? So as I said in the beginning, prospectors, they identify an inspirational vision, signature strength, uh, that, that we enroll to achieve the goals, celebrating its successes, learning about well-being and flourishing, mindfulness activities. So for instance, if you want, I'll show you a uh, coffee break. But we designed, you know how you, when you go to a, a workshop, you always get these slides. <laughs> so we decided, no, this is not enough. And so we designed um, a coloring book uh, uh, that matches the journey of the people. So, uh, and people tell us it's fun. And, and what happens, uh, what the material that we started to collect is when people actually uh, he, um, collect, uh, co start coloring, some new ideas come up. So this is like a completely emerging field, which I can't yet report, but it's just gonna be exciting to set that. Uh, vision setting is new to parents of children with disability. Traditional in, uh, interventions focus on the short term. So positive psychology prospection as, uh, was, so there's a book called Homo Prospectus by Seligman and his team, can assist parents set a long term, set, uh, set long term goals. Parents as these, excited about the future possibility is a new kid on the block in the disability sector. Prospection becomes more tangible when they place uh, their goals in what we call a vision board. So parents craft short-term goals, and, and um, at what you see on the left is uh, the, the first step of the uh, brainstorming when you, when you have all these goals for the future. In the, in the right side, we ask people to cluster their goals, and we ask them to cluster according to two categories. What do you think you can do right now, right here, start with what you know, and what you want to ask a professional with. So if I'm telling you these questions now, they might sound quite simple, but if you don't have a representation of this, you get to a professional and everything is a big mix in your head and that causes stress. Whereas focusing on certain areas is actually um, more uh, powerful for parents. So they report this type of insight empowers them because they start feeling less dependent on practitioners. This of course, just a glimpse of a multi-dimensional empowerment outcome, but we're picture picture now, so. <laughs> Short-term goals are prioritized on an action board, so it's a different thing, that goes on the fridge. So that was a little bit of a personal revenge for us because we asked parents, where is your report that you got from the professionals? And they said, usually under the fridge. So we said, this is gonna go over the fridge. So people set their goals with a little star. And as you can see, um, this is a Maori family, so we're starting to work with Maori families to make our processes uh, culturally sensitive and culturally appropriate. Um, so other than child and family goals, parents also set personal goals, also completely new in the disability sector. Usually we focus on it. As parents, we automatically, I have a child in, as, uh, with a disability, so this is my personal experience as well, but you know, we all, always focus on me last, me last, but actually it's not so straight. Um, oh, sorry. So, sorry. Okay. So, what uh, we're also starting to work with Canada First Nations because they start. They have really good ties with Maori here, so that's really exciting. So, the results very quickly. Uh, first thing we look at on the bottom is the goals that there are that people achieve. So, we're talking about their short-term goal during our short intervention, but this is what we're measuring: 100% children's goal, 100% family goals, and. 78% parent goal, this is because people insist they want fitness goals and no one really loses five kilos in two weeks. No? <laughs> <laughs> um, they uh, report significant gains on, so these are the measures. There is, uh, we have psychological empowerment, uh, we have uh, hope as measured by the Snyder scale, and we have of course the PERMA profiler measuring well-being. So, for those uh, psychologists in the room, understanding that there's a significant 
difference between a pre and a post in a two month program. That actually is quite, I mean, I had to ask other people, colleagues to make sure and peer review to make sure that it is actually, but it is uh, so. Um, this is how we talk about knowledge translation. How do we sh share our results with the non-scientific community? So this is one of the parents who designed this and she designed um, uh, the, the, that parents are feeling more empowered and hopeful. They describe their agency in achieving progress for their child and the strategies that they use along the way and that uh, well-being flourishing features in this great journey and achievements are both individual and collective. So, there's, um... so the big surprise is that not only parents gain empowerment, which we were hoping for, but when we did, when we taught professionals, so practitioners in early intervention to use these tools, they too experienced a significant increase in empowerment. So that was like a complete shock to us because we're used to the experts feeling that they have the right tools, etc. But in turn, in fact, there is a gap in this sector and we hope that we can be part of these answers. Of course, there's many answers, but um, so we started to design uh, training programs for, for professionals as well. We were fortunate to meet Martin Seligman in, uh, earlier in the year and, and show him our stuff. And uh, he's, he said, well, this is completely um, uh, congruent with the hope circuit and, and uh, the feeling of, um, of, of um, and the change that hope brings in our lives. And uh, we, want, we, want, we aim to continue positive parent education but I think that what pe people are saying now is that this is actually a really good program for people who are, don't have a child with a disability, so very high hope for. As a result of the New Zealand group, uh, there was a creation of a peer network, and that peer beyond people feeling increases in individual well-being, people uh, also uh, created a, a group, and what was characteristic of this group is they decided to go forward together and create change in New Zealand. They wanted to share their learning with the rest of New Zealand. They, they are doing it actually now. And uh, it's uh, very, uh, you know, it's like a wind of change. In, uh, but positive psychologists, that's what we do. We, we challenge status quo and that's, we're ready for it. So, so this particular group that happened in Hamilton uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, in support of the benefit mindset, uh, concept coined by Peggy Kern and Ashley Buchanan. Uh, these people, uh, this group, uh, want, uh, is crea of creating a network of uh, alumni to the program who want to uh, share more of their learning but also uh, uh, spread this movement throughout New Zealand so there will be more people empowered to, to do create. So we are not saying it's a us versus them situation at all. We certainly still need uh, practitioners and professionals, etc. but we just need to rebalance because we need, uh, once parents uh, get recognized that they too have a level of expertise, it's a different relationship, it's a different type of collaboration. So that's one of the things that we study also, it's a different type of collaboration now. Um, so that's the last slide, some of our numbers, the program is offered in four countries over 100 professionals were trained to, to facilitate the visioning sessions using this fixability tool that I showed you. If you're interested, I'll show you at the break. Uh, over 350 alumni graduated from the program so far, 20 peer workers. So this is the big thing. What's a peer worker? It's a family member who is now wanting to go and talk to other people. So they receive a special training for this. And uh, 38 alumni starting to spread the movement in Aotearoa in New Zealand. Oops, sorry. Okay. Thanks. This presentation is focused on the results of a small part of a global study. It's a pioneering implementation of positive psychology in the disability sector and the significant increases in empowerment, hope, and well being. Individual impact are translated into collective impact, supporting the new theory of collective benefit mindset. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.